Hello friends. I wonder if I may be about to be uh, a little controversial in this video because in today's episode I'd like to talk to you about the Auric XL. <laughs> I know that there are mixed opinions on these cleaners. Some people say they're really good, some people say they're truly, truly awful, and some people are just sort of in the in the middle with them. They're a bit meh. I mean, yeah, some will say, oh, they're they're all right. Um, I'm kind of wavering towards the side of actually quite liking them. I I suppose from a personal point of view, I do actually quite like the Auric XL series. This is actually my personal cleaner. I use this one uh, around the house um, all, all the time. The reason I do that is because at six foot two, I'm quite tall. Um, and I find certain machines like uh, turbo powers, say, they're too short for me. Uh, they tend to hurt my back. If I'm using them for long periods of time, my back really starts to ache. I don't find that with the Auric. It's got a really tall handle and it suits me from a, a personal point of view, a personal use, it suits me perfectly. Um, now, it's <laughs> what I'm gonna say now uh, kind of contradicts the fact that I actually quite like using it. From a quality point of view, I wouldn't say they are the best machine ever. This particular model, this is an XL uh, 9300, so this is an older one. I, I'm not going to say it's an early Auric because the early Aurics were completely different to this. They have a really strange history and it's not something that I really want to cover in this video in any great detail really. That There are other videos on YouTube that uh, show the history of, of this cleaner um, from its original inception as a whirlpool um, to then becoming, certainly in the UK, the McDonald Electric, which I have, and I'll link a video um, somewhere here, so you can see my um, um, 19, isn't 1975 McDonald machine? And that cleaner looks exactly the same as an Auric XL 4000. I think they were, the, they were exactly the same cleaner. And that design was built under license by multiple companies in the 1970s it is a really weird history uh, it's really strange but focusing on these cleaners so this XL style now I don't actually know what year we first got the Auric XL that looked like this I, I would actually love to know so if you know please leave me a comment under the video and I'll read it because I would love to know what year we got this style of cleaner as I say, this, this is an earlier version because the power switch is actually here um, on the hood. It's this white button here and the later cleaners had the power switch on the handle and then you had a cable that runs down from the top uh, behind the bag and into the what, into the main body, I suppose. I mean, there isn't much to this cleaner. It's, it's very, you know, it's, it's, it's small. It's a small vacuum cleaner. I do find it quite laughable, the fact that Auric marketed this as a commercial vacuum cleaner for use in hotels and the like. And now, okay, I can, I can see the point of having a lightweight, easy to use, upright vacuum cleaner as something you would want in a hotel. Definitely, you can move it around easily. It's so light, it's so easy to move. You can stick it on your cleaning trolley, take it off, take it into the room, do the vacuum. I mean, look, I can I can wave this around so so easily. So from that that point of view, yeah, I get that. But and there's a massive but with these cleaners. The quality of the internals is not fantastic, with the exception of the brush roll. Now this makes a massive difference. I think all XLs had a wooden brush roll with these really good bristles on them. These are nice stiff bristles. Um, and this th this brush roll, I've got cat hair on it, gives a really good clean because it scrubs the carpet, really scrubs it. And, he, and I really like the way that the, um, the bristles are in that uh, 
helical format that come into a point. You see that point there? And that's where the suction channel is. So it, the cleaner brings the dirt and the dust to that point and then it's whipped away by the airflow. But that's kind of where it all goes wrong for me. I mean, the, the motor on these, it's a tiny motor. It's only four, 400 watts and it has a dirty fan style system. So all of the dirt goes into the fan, up the back of the handle, up here. There, there's the fan chamber here. Um, up the handle, into the bag, drops down, job done. Nice and simple. However, much as we saw with the Starlight, depending on what the fan's made of, means the machine is durable or not. Now these cleaners, um, the earlier ones I believe had metal fans, and th this one's got a metal fan in it. The later ones had plastic fans, so the later ones are probably better because of that plastic fan, and as we've, we've already covered, if you make a fan out of plastic, it has a certain amount of give to it, so it can survive large items coming into the fan chamber and hitting the fan. If you've got a metal fan, that is not the case. And really, what are you going to find in hotel rooms? You know, this could be like bits of change everywhere, coins, um, stuff that have fallen off people, like zips maybe, broken zips are just going to go onto the carpet. The cleaners are going to come along. I mean, the cleaners don't care, do they? they? They're just there to vacuum and clean a room in a certain amount of time. You pick up anything like that in an auric, it's going to smash into that metal fan. Boom, that's your fan gone. And in some cases as well, I've actually seen these where the fan casing has been smashed to pieces. So the, this point here, this plastic is not particularly strong. I mean, it's it's durable to, to act as this kind of pivot point here. But if you've got something that's entering the fan and then being hit by the fan, uh, and that's, that's a really dense item, like a coin, and it's hitting this plastic, it can smash it to pieces. I've seen them with holes in them that have been just broken through. Um, so that's not good. That's not good at all. And these earlier cleaners, certainly with this one, um, they changed the bearings in them at some point. I don't know when, but at some point they changed the bearings. These earlier cleaners have a um, ball race bearing at, uh, which side is it? Hang on. Where's the, where's the suction side? Yeah, so that's the fan side. So we have the belt side here. So the motor is, is here. Um, so the top bearing, as you would see it from this point, which is here, the top bearing is a ball race. But this cleaner has a sleeve bearing, a brass sleeve bearing, as its bottom bearing that um, the fan goes on, on the fan side which is such a stupid idea. Again, I've covered this with you in the past. Those brass sleeve bearings are not good bearings. You need a twin ball race if you're gonna have any kind of life to your motor. Because you've got the steel shaft of the armature rubbing against a brass sleeve bearing and it's just gonna wear out. It just wears through. The worst example of these was on the Goblin Rio. The original 800 watt Goblin Rio machines had a ball race lower bearing next to the fan and a, a, a so soft, a soft brass bearing as a, a top bearing. And they would last two years maximum. I saw so many of them just ruined because they Goblin cheaped out, and that's what it is, they cheaped out and put a brass sleeve bearing as the top bearing. It is a stupid idea, and Auric did the same in this particular cleaner. So it is a minor miracle that this vacuum cleaner still works. The other thing I would say that I don't like about this, well, about any Auric really, is the fact that it is so loud. There is no sound deadening in this cleaner whatsoever. Nothing. I suppose you could laughably call the shroud that goes over the motor a kind of barrier, but it doesn't do anything. It's just it's just there to like um, 
direct the, co the cooling airflow over the motor. It's not really there to stop any noise. And oh my God, you can't use these cleaners for any length of time. I really, oh, those poor people who used to use them to clean hotel rooms, my God, their ears must have been bleeding once they'd finished. So that is another real down point. It's a, it's a massive negative. So they're loud. They aren't made particularly well, certainly these early cleaners. And they're not very feature rich. And that's a key thing. So from memory, I remember seeing these cleaners for sale in the UK probably 25 years ago. Um, this red style Auric XL. They were £250, £250 for a motor, a stick and a dust bag. Now, OK, you've got that awful hand back. That's like, your, <laughs> like a free bonus worth £50. Yeah, they just threw that in because there's no tools for these. You can't do any above the floor cleaning with this upright. So they had to include the um, hand vac. So 250 quid, okay, it got you two vacuum cleaners of dubious quality, and 250 quid in 1995 was a lot of money. So compare it to what you could have bought, that, for the same money, you could have had a Dyson DC01 Absolute. So you compare these two cleaners, uh, okay, that has a HEPA filter, a 1200 watt clean fan motor, doesn't need bags, built in tools, you can do your stairs with them, bagless, new tech. Now, okay, you can argue with me all day long that DC01 is not a particularly good cleaner, and hmm, I would agree with you in some ways, but is the Auric? better than a DC01 Absolute for the same money. Mm, mm. That's a hard sell. That is a really hard sell. <laughs> now one thing I really do like about the Auric, we're going back to the pros now, is that it does have a massive dust bag. This bag is gigantic and it will last you a long, long time. And even though it's paper, the airflow is exceptionally good. So, although they, they don't have a lot of suction, they don't need it. They don't need suction power because there's no hose, there's no tools, you, 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 you don't need it. It is designed to clean a carpet. And actually, it does it really, really well. The combination of that brilliant brush roll, um, a, a lot of airflow from the fan, the fact that the bag does not clog up particularly quickly, means that they clean really well. I, as I say, use this around the house and it does a great job. It does a great job. The cat hair is just, oh, she's looking at me. It's just whipped up. It's whipped away. Now, does it give a particularly deep clean of the carpets? Probably not. You kind of need a bit of suction for that to lift, really lift the carpet up. Um, that combination of suction and airflow is, is really what deep cleans a, a carpet. So you could kind of say this is more of a glorified carpet sweeper, really, um, with a little bit of airflow added in. So to sum up, I like the Auric XL from a usability point of view. For me, it works really well. I like using it. I don't like the noise, it's so loud, uh, and the fact that you can't do any above the floor cleaning, although, you know, if you, in, in these modern times, if you've got a Dyson handheld cleaner, then, wow, brilliant, you're off. You know, you can just whip that out. Use this on your floors. It cleans hard floors as as well. And it's surprisingly good at it. I can't believe, is there a, is there a back bit? Yeah, see here, look, there's this, um, like, uh, flexible strip here on the base, so it doesn't, like, scatter stuff as it's cleaning. So on hard floors too, you know, it's great. Carpets, hard floors, brilliant. If you want them cleaned, grab your Auric XL. Now there is something that I would like to ask you, um, dear, dearest viewers. I have a feeling that this particular cleaner is from 1995 
and I just want to read you what's on its um, ratings plate here at the back. So, I mean, I, yeah, I suppose it's a massive clue that it is from 95. So it says on the back here, um, model number XL9300, serial number 95-10877. So I would assume that this is the 10,877th Auric XL manufactured in 1995. That's my guess. Can you tell me if I'm right? I know some other machines, some later machines, uh, actually have um, a year of manufacture actually on the plate. I've, I've seen that previously. This one doesn't, it's just that, that clue that it's 1995 and the fact that it's got the, the power switch here and the old, older style motor that's not twin ball race. So to sum up, I'd really like to hear from you guys actually. I'd really like to know what you think about the Auric XL. Is it a good vacuum cleaner? Is it a mediocre vacuum cleaner? Or is it a terrible vacuum cleaner in your opinion? For me, personally, uh, probably mediocre heading towards good. Um, you know, there's not a lot to complain about because it's not a particularly complex cleaner, is it? It's just, it does its job, that's it. It does what it does. And what it actually does, it does pretty well with a couple of m minor downsides. So that's it for me. Um, I'm gonna stop waffling now. I, I haven't used this cleaner in, um, ooh, a good few weeks actually because I've been using the other ones I've been doing the video so I tend to use those cleaners just to do a quick whip round um, so yeah it'll be nice to get back to using the Auric I do quite like it it's that even even this textured plastic is quite nice it's, just, it's really weird you know when, when you know that you shouldn't like something but you you do kind of like it it's really odd um, and, oh that's one other thing to point out this the other clue that this is a really early machine is that, um, sorry, an early er machine, is that it doesn't have the quick belt change um, opening here on this side. So normally the, well no, the, the later cleaners, there's like a panel with a screw here, you undo the screw and then you can slide that panel back and you can get to the belt. So you can't do that on this one, you actually have to go in from underneath. What's that there, is that a bit of paint? Ugh. You have to go in underneath and you have to take the entire base off in order to change the belt, which is, let's be honest, that's pretty flipping stupid, isn't it? Because you expose the motor, you expose the wires and everything in there. If somebody doesn't know what they're doing, then they're poking around inside, maybe they haven't taken the plug out. Oof, yeah, not not ideal. And I noticed this one, I noticed as well, this one's still got its spare belt in its little hidey hole, which is quite nice. So yeah, there we go. Okay, that's enough from me. Um, let's go and give it a run. Don't forget to do the usual comment, subscribe and like. Always love hearing from you. Appreciate it massively. And I really do want to hear your opinions on the Auric XL. Um, I'd love you to tell me what year this was from. And um, yeah, there we go. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.